Hi everyone and welcome to Shaping St. Bernard. I'm your host Karen Boudry. On this edition we're going to talk drainage. We are in hurricane season and the big question is are our pumps and canals able to handle a tropical storm if we are to get that this season? We hope not but in case we want to know that things are working. You know, the parish took over the pumping stations, eight of them, and 60 more miles of canals after Hurricane Ida from the Lakebourne Levee District. There was a millage pass to pay for it. You voted for it. So are the promised improvements and maintenance issues being addressed? Well, to answer that question, we have Monty Montalongo with us. He is the man who is in charge of this now, this new drainage and pumping station um, program that the parish has undertaken. So we appreciate you being here, Monty. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having us, Karen. Um, I started this job in, in January, January 18th, I started. And uh, we, we took on a pretty big task to, to take all <laughs> this stuff over. But uh, things are going really well. We, we put together a good team. We have five people that came over from Lake Bourne Levy, and uh, we got eight more people that, uh, that we hired since then. And uh, we're working to have a good team. We've got good communications, really good people that's vested in St. Bernard Parish. They care about St. Bernard Parish, and uh, I think we're going to do a terrific job. Off to a good start. So what are some of the things, the team, obviously getting that team in place was mm -hmm. really, really critical. It's a key. And, you know, people that know what mm -hmm. they're doing. Um, but what are some other things that you've instituted? Because the, the biggest issue that I remember <coughs> Guy and, and y'all talking about when we passed this millage was that, you know, these, these pumping stations, canals weren't mm -hmm. being maintained the way you as a parish would like to have done it. How have you been able to do that? Well, jumping we're, in. we're cleaning out most of the drainage canals. We, it, we've been, it's a really big challenge because the grass grows so fast and uh, initially coming in we cleaned out all the canals. We cut trees, we took so much debris out of there. It's unbelievable and uh, it's really hard to keep up the way the grass is growing right now and like I say it's uh, we got 110 miles of canal and you got to do both sides so that's 220 wow. miles and uh, the price, the price of everything just went it skyrocketed. Uh, the herbicides that we spray the weeds in the canals with, when I first started on it was $460 a 30 gallon drum and it increased to $1,700 a drum, oh which is unbelievable. Oh my gosh, that is unbelievable. Also the price of fuel. Right. Uh, when the we diesel started, was in, yeah. diesel was about $2 a gallon when I came on and uh, it increased to about five fifty per gallon and we got 160,000 gallons of uh, you know fuel tanks that we have to fill up you know before hurricane season. Wow! So, the what you really initially budgeted, and what you thought your expenses were going to be, obviously blown to heck, right? Well, so <laughs> the way the prices skyrocketed, yeah. and and there was no way of telling what was right. going to happen. You know, there's no way we could budget. You know a year ago for what we have now, for what we're witnessing now. Yeah, absolutely. But we've still been able to do some major improvements. Um, I was out there and we're going to see some pictures in a little bit, but um, we we got two new engines absolutely. out uh, there and that's good stuff because before that we had stuff that dated back to World War II, so that's that's improvement. Sure, some of those <laughs> engines, we had four of those Deutsch engines and they, they were put together in 1945. Wow. They had them on uh, submarines in World War II. Now, um, I think there's, there's something that, that a lot of folks just need to be reminded of. I mean, we hear it, but we forget it. When, when there are these downpours, and I'm not talking, talking about a tropical storm, but just a, a, a regular rainstorm that floods our street, mm -hmm. and people are like, wow, they haven't turned the pumps on. You know, that's the first thing mm -hmm. you hear. Or the pumps aren't working. Or why is this water not leaving my street? Explain that, would you, Monty? Well. First off, we need to get the water from your streets to the drainage canal. People throw, throw a lot of debris and stuff um, in the canals and uh, it blocks up our pumps Gosh. and it, it'll block up the, the catch basins on the streets and, and the water just can't get to us. We can only pump out whatever we have at, on the 40, you know, to pump, to pump it to the marsh. But, the, but gravity has to do its job first. It, Streets are meant to be, you know, like mini canals, but they've got sure. to get um, 
to the canals. You don't pump streets, you pump canals. Right. So that water has to get to the canal first. So people have to have some patience there, right? That's, that's absolutely true. You know, everything, everything drains from the Mississippi River north towards the 40 Arpent Canal. And our pumps, our suctions on our pumps are based in the, on a 40 Arpent. And uh, until that water gets to us, we can't pump it. There's no way of pumping. Y'all are watching these storms daily and, and making sure the canals are at the levels they need to be. But let's go back a minute to the, to the, um, the trash and the things that, that really give you headaches. We spend all this money. We're getting this new equipment. Um, we have more personnel than ever before. We're, mm -hmm. we're working really hard to upgrade this whole system. And then we have debris in the canal that's something that clogs up everything, and yet it's something that we can control. Like if you would just go to the dump, it's two feet from a canal sure. in some cases. It's right over there. How it, do we it, it's really frustrating. Train minds on that. Because that's something that could be prevented. You yeah. know, it's easily, it, you know, if, and if people would realize what's happening with this stuff, you know, if we get a, a big rainstorm and we're trying to pump and, uh, you know, a refrigerator would go up to our grates and everything, we're going to have to stop and take care of that stuff and, and then regain, you know, it'd probably take us 10, 15 minutes to get that out and then we'll start pumping again. Sometimes you don't have a whole lot of time. So what are the plans um, this hurricane season um, that we're doing differently, per se, than what we did last year, now that we, St. Bernard Parish, are in charge of all of this? Well, the canals are in much better shape. You know, the water okay. can flow freely to our pumping stations. Uh, we do a lot of maintenance. Uh, we've done a lot of work, all changes and change parts. and. Uh, you know, we, we, we're doing everything that we can to make sure that everything's gonna, gonna go accordingly when the rain comes. We, we're making improvements every day. Everything that we see needs to be replaced, we're replacing it or, or repairing it. And, uh, you know, we're in really good shape. We're probably in, in the best shape that we've been in in the last 20 years. Oh, that's awesome to hear. It is. Now talk, talk about the manning of the pumping stations. Um, before, I understand it was pretty sporadic. It wasn't 24-7 by any means. It's not quite 24-7 now. How, how are those pumping stations manned by your team? We have somebody at, at uh, our main pumping stations every day. And we got four pump operators that work nights. They work from 10 o'clock at night till 6.30 in the morning. So we pretty much manned about 18 hours a day in the main, main pumping stations. And if there's a need, obviously someone oh, will c cover those, cover that gap. Sure, absolutely. If need be, you know the the the, per the personnel that's off. You know, should we need them, uh, they're happy to come in. Gotcha. All right. Well, we're going to take a look um, at exactly how a pumping station works, what it looks like, what. Um, kind of get a bird's eye view of, of what Monty's been talking about. Um, we had a chance to go out to pumping station number six and talk with Ashton Stevens. Mm -hmm. Take a look. All right, Ashton, we're, we're at one of our eight pumping stations at the end of Jean Lafitte Parkway, and we can see weather's coming. Mm -hmm. So you anticipate this, you look at the radar. How do you formulate a game plan when you see weather like this? Well. It, it, it all starts with, with the maintenance we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. So we come in every morning. First thing I do when I come in, I check the oil levels in, in all my engines. I make sure my compressors are working and running because they, they need air to be able to work. Gotcha. Then I'll look at the radar and determine, okay, what are my chances of getting rain today? Then I'll come out and I'll look at our gauge here, find out what level my canal is at. We're probably at seven, so that means in between, we're seven... 7.0 and 7.5 is, is in where we're at right now. The lilies during the summer, they get thicker and yeah. they're about a foot and a half thick foot right half. now. Okay. So, we're, so that's we're below sea level we're talking five. about. That's correct. Like the six right there is six feet below sea level. And this is where you want this pumping station in particular to be pumped down to in, in preparation. In 7.0 and 7.5. Now okay. during hurricanes and when we, we know we're going to get a lot more rain, we will pump down to a lower level than what we're at now. Gives us time that if we do get that downpour rain in a short amount of time, it gives us that reaction time to get the pumps running and start pumping 
because right sometimes you start the pumps and you don't see even though you're pumping water out you don't see the results right away right because just as much water is coming in as you're pumping as you're out. pumping out. or sometimes okay. more sometimes we'll be pumping at a high rpm and the water level is still rising it just so, depends. So you're monitoring and you're trying to figure out how much water to pump based on what you can tell is the rainfall and, and the flow. I mean, or you just go all well, out. This, you know. this is what tells us when to pump, how much to pump, okay. and when to stop pumping. Now I'm looking at this and I'm going, there's a lot of lilies in here. Um, yes. What kind of maintenance do you have to do to make sure the water flows? I mean, I see a well, little, the, little gap lilies, here and I'm, I'm seeing them all caught down here in the, the teeth. The lilies and actually don't affect us they pumping don't. at all. Okay. Because the water that we're pulling in is below the top of the... People look at this and go, oh my God, they're not maintaining these canals. Get Correct. rid of these lilies. Right. And, and, and okay. the truth of the matter is I could have all of these pumps running at, at 900, 1,000 RPMs and that water, it's flowing through underneath the lilies the whole time. Okay. And uh, the things that do affect us when it comes to that, these grates catch everything. And then our rake system, we use to clear the grates when, when debris and, and trash does get, we've pulled up mattresses, couches. Oh, I've, um, I'm sure you've seen you it all. imagine that people would throw into the canal, like when, it, when it's trash to them, a refrigerator, whatever, that gets caught up in the, uh, in the grates and the rakes. We, we can do our job 100%. But it, they're also, it, it takes some responsibility from the people in the parish as well. Um, not throwing trash into the canals, keeping the, the catch basins on your streets uh, clear and free of debris, things like that. Those Don't blow in the grass clippings in there yeah, well, and all correct, that good stuff. Right. There, there are times we hear people, and again, public perception of that we never can do enough to get the water sure. out of here. It could rain four inches on, on the other side of St. Bernard Highway it might take an hour and a half for that for that rain to actually get here because of catch patients being clogged up. And so no matter what to, you do here, right? As, as, as parishioners, we need to do everything we can to make sure that that water has an open and clear path to get to us. Once it's to us, we can pump it and get it out of here, but we can only pump what's here. All right, that was a really interesting look at sort of a day in the life of a pump operator. Um, we did talk to Ashton Monty about, um, as you saw, the levels and where you get those levels. And people might ask, why don't you pump it all the way down? Then that gives you all that extra space for water. That would be a great thing if we could pump the, state, <laughs> pump the canals all the way down to the bottom where we wouldn't have any water at all. But we have to keep the water tables at a certain level. If we don't do that, the canal banks will collapse yeah. and we'll lose the canal banks. So we can't do that. That would be great if we could, but we just can't do that. Yeah. So you do the, you do the best, and, and that's, there's some science to it. It's not like you're just, you know, saying, oh, we like this level, right? Oh, sure. <laughs> no, if, 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 if we're not expecting any rain for a week or so, we'll, we'll maintain a high level in the canals. And if we see where we're going to get a couple, three inches of rain, we're going to pull them down probably a foot or so, uh, lower than what we normally pull them down, just to prepare for that water. Gotcha. So some of the, the new things that um, you're, you're working on and kind of getting forward thinking and finding different ways to maintain these canals, mm -hmm. Parish bought a mud boat. Tell us about that. Exactly. We, uh, we bought a mud boat to try to spray the herbicides to keep the grass down out of the 40 off and all the, all the canals, the drainage canals that we have. We put boat launches at, at Station 6 and also at station seven. Are those the more problematic ones? Is that why you do Yes. Yeah. You think that mud boat's gonna make your job a lot easier? Oh, absolutely. You know, we can, we can do a lot of the canal banks with the, with the boat. And uh, you know, it, it does take time, whether yeah. it's the boat, the tractor, you know, spraying with a side by side. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. Um, as we're in the hurricane season, you know, you're doing your daily maintenance and everything. Let me ask you this. So if, um, God forbid, um, let's say this weekend they're saying there is um, a tropical system headed our, our way, you know, what's, what's your protocol? What goes into to motion for you all at these pumping stations knowing that, say, a tropical system or a hurricane is, is headed our way? And, and is there anything different than obviously what had been done over the past 20 years without the parish's involvement? We try to be proactive. 
we ready if if a hurricane was coming i hope not but if a hurricane's coming real soon we ready for it we we proactive all year long we prepare for this all year long so when it comes we'll be ready do you have extra training that you did with these new employees to get ready i mean so new new protocols new things in place with them we mix these guys up with the old we had five veterans that came in from lake Bourne and we kind of mix them together we'll move them from station to station so they'll be familiar with all the different stations and uh you know i, I think they're ready i think i think we're going to be fine and you know unlike new orleans that's that is tied we always hear about the the turbines and the electricity going out and energy and all the the issues with that we don't have that same issue here right no we don't we uh we have we have shore power entergy supplies us with with power which we have for the most part but uh the only thing we use that for is to run the uh the air compressors compressors right. the air compressors run the starters on the on the pumps on the pump engines once we start that pump engine we don't need electricity for anything we we can run and you have backup generators, though, and too. And we have our own backup generators should uh, Antigy lose power. We have backup generators. And usually for a hurricane, we'll bring in a, an extra generator. Just in so case. So it's, it's, it's redundant, but, you know, sometimes you need it. And you have the safe houses now? We have three safe houses and a wind rating of about 200 miles an hour. And they, they're really nice. They're in good shape. They have their own generators. And, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, you probably could sleep three or four people in each in each safe house. Okay. Well, let's hope that we are not put to the test this hope hurricane not. season. It would be nice to, to get a break, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would be. It'd be great. But uh, I feel comfortable with, with what we have right now. I think we're ready. Good deal. Thanks so much. That's good to hear. I appreciate it, Monty Montalongo. No, thank you for having me. All right. All right, and that is it for this edition of Shaping St. Bernard. We hope to see you next time. I'm your host, Karen Boudry. Bye for now.